All right. So I'm delighted that you're, everyone is here. I'm especially delighted to uh, have John Rackman with us today. Uh, so John and I met fortuitously um, at a uh, Thomas Hirschhorn exhibit of the Gramsci Monument in the Bronx. <laughs> and uh, that's how our friendship grew. It, actually, we met on the subway platform uh, on the, in the Bronx, coming back from the Gramsci Monument. And ever since, uh, <laughs> we've been best of friends. Um, John is a philosopher and an art theorist and art history historian. And um, John's been working on Foucault and Deleuze and French philosophy uh, for many years. Uh, I was just at the Bibliothèque Vrain in at the Sor at the Place de la Sorbonne, and which is one of my favorite places to go. And I always go into the second-hand area, and there was John Rockman's book <laughs> uh, from 1985, I think, uh, called uh, Michel Foucault, The Freedom of Philosophy, translated in French. Um, and so, uh, but uh, he's written uh, numerous books, uh, The Freedom of Philosophy in 85, uh, Le Savoir-Faire avec l'Inconscient in 86, um, Truth and Eros, Foucault, Lacan, and the Question of Ethics in 1991. Constructions, Writing Architecture in 1998. I'm skipping some, um, but to give you a flavor. Um, the Deleuze Connections in 2000. Uh, Rendre la Terre Légère in 2005. <laughs> and then with Étienne Belibard, a collection of French philosophy since 1945, Problems, Concepts, Inventions, that was in 2011. And so um, John was uh, thinking a lot about these issues of um, Snowden, and we were talking about that, and uh, was going to think about it in the context of, uh, of uh, Foucault's later lectures and tr truth telling. And so, um, and there was born the workshop. So I'm delighted that you're here, John. And um, I thought that maybe just before going very quickly, we would go around the table because I know a lot of you know each other, but not everyone. So um, why don't we just kind of like quickly go around the table. Ratan, sure. you want to start? Sure. Um, I'm Ratan Jahal. I'm the second year PhD student in art history working <coughs> on contemporary art. Mm. Great. I'm Carsten. I'm a visiting scholar at philosophy at the New School, and I'm writing my dissertation on Foucault freedom and political institutions. So you have to... Uh, Read that you've you've read the eighty five book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, good. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Jesus Rodriguez Velasco. I'm Latin American and Nigerian culture. Al Burton, I just want to introduce Dr. Foucault. He is a scholar at Penn, and I'm from here. My brother's from Minota, so when I met him for the doctor and what we studied in school <laughs> <laughs> this fall, <laughs> I decided there. <laughs> I'm William Penn. I'm a lawyer, but I'm also in the PhD program in art history at Trinity School. Mm. I'm Esteban Rodriguez, and <coughs> I need to leave early because I'm going to be teaching some uh, German study abroad students. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks uh, so much, uh, and um, it's true, we started to talk about Foucault uh, on the subway station in the Bronx, and haven't stopped since. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, and I look forward, uh, I gather Bernard 
has written something connected to Snowden that I look forward to reading. And for the uh, written version, this talk, this workshop is part or is preliminary to a talk I was supposed to give in Brazil. I've now canceled for complicated reason. I can't go, but it will send something written. So that added uh, time allowed me to perhaps incorporate some of the things that Bernard himself has been working on. So it's this kind of incredible intersection that we were unaware of that uh, had produced this occasion. Uh, <coughs> so uh, just a few words maybe uh, about what interested me <coughs> for this talk uh, before uh, 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 talking about it in this context. So the invitation in Brazil, it came from the Foucault group in Brazil. Of course, Foucault himself was in Brazil, created a, a, a long and interesting uh, study of Foucault in Brazil. Those I've been to a few of the Foucault conferences. It's very interesting in Latin America. There's many interesting Foucault scholars that are a little bit different than in North America, so it's interesting to, to get that point of view. So for this symposium, I wanted to take up a theme the theme of a politics of truth, uh, which is uh, a theme that puzzled or interested me in Foucault. And the, as Bernard was saying, the publication of the courses and also Bernard's own publication of uh, the lectures in Louvain and so forth have uh, retrospectively allowed us to see this problem, truth, the history of truth, the techniques of truth, the procedures of truth, uh, uh, as an ongoing preoccupation of Foucault that runs through all of the uh, uh, courses <coughs> and therefore all of the different aspects of his work because in the courses he's constantly reformulating what he's trying to do. So uh, in order to get at this unfinished uh, but um, ongoing problem, what, what is a politics of truth? And how do you do the history of truth? And what does Foucault mean by this? I wanted to take on the case of Snowden. Uh, first, because it looks like his act was an act of, of politics of truth. And so in what sense does this elucidate or does it uh, help us to think about this problem in Foucault? Uh, also, um, uh, uh, Brazil has a very interesting reaction to the Snowden revelation. We have uh, Glenn Greenwald, who's there with his partner. The, see quite a bit of stuff that was done there. Uh, mm -hmm. Dilma had a very strong reaction. She didn't like these Boeing airplanes. She canceled the trip to the U.S. So you have a very strong Brazilian uh, uh, reaction to the revelation, which is part of the problem that interested me, the sense in which this is a global or transnational problem. And we have to see the revelation in those terms, the first aspect. Uh, uh, and uh, a second um, has to do with Foucault himself. Uh, so, of course, uh, uh, there's many ways of thinking about Foucault, so this is only one, obviously. Uh, the person, one of the people that's somewhat close to uh, what interested me in trying to work out this problem in Foucault is Jacques Rancière, who gave a lecture in Brazil called Foucault's Difficult Legacy. It was in the Folio de San Paulo. Uh, uh, and so the reason that Foucault's legacy is so difficult is that he had a practice that fits in no fixed or prior political program <coughs> or ideology or um, that often troubled the divisions, uh, ideological divisions. Uh, and so uh, uh, Rancière uses this to say he doesn't like the attempts of people to credit Foucault retrospectively with a program that he didn't have. And he thinks people who talk about biopower do that, and he thinks the people who talk about gay politics do that. So uh, what's difficult and interesting in the legacy of Foucault is this idea of problematizing. Uh, and so the question of uh, speaking the truth or the politics of speaking the truth uh, has to do with that. How can we speak the truth? outside already given programs, already given ideologies. Uh, I um, 
Uh, it's true, I did write a book on this problem of truth in 1991, uh, Foucault, uh, uh, Lacan, The Question of Ethics. I won't say very much about that uh, in this context. Uh, it's very interesting now to look back. Uh, um, um, but uh, I'd like to talk less about ethics, uh, more about politics, and less about psychoanalysis. The, the big focus of that study was the uh, conflict and intersection between Lacan and Foucault. There's quite a bit to say about all that. There's a kind of interesting French philosophical or theoretical context that interests me. In the question period, if people want to ask me about that, I can say more. I would include debates about Derrida. The Lacan is very complicated to person. We'll tell you secrets and so forth. We'll probably get it again in, in that uh, context. But there's Alain Badiou, there's this Maoist thing, there's a popular justice trial, there, there's that. I'm just leaving all of that out and just uh, talking about uh, <coughs> Foucault and uh, Snowden. Uh, so um, another uh, side of this uh, uh, question that uh, emerged as I started to think about these two things in tandem with one another, what does Foucault mean by the history or politics of truth? And what is the nature of the act that Snowden, uh, the act of speaking the truth that we see that gives Snowden the role, is, um, came from seeing a film called Citizen Four by, by Laura Portrait. Uh, and um, my title I took, therefore, from this uh, film. And Citizen Four is the encrypted name that, uh, or rather the name that Snowden adopted as he wrote to Laura Portrait to ask her to participate in this film. Um, and um, the film itself strikes me, that's the kind of art history side of things, uh, as interesting in its own right, uh, because um, this it's a kind of now, of course it's won all these prizes, but it's a documentary that seems to be have an interesting involvement in the act that it documents and dramatizes. Uh, and um, we see that sort of from the start of the film uh, when one is told that Snowden has contacted Laura Portress and Glenn Greenwald. To, uh, Stanley, this film, if you haven't seen it, it's very easily accessible. It's now on HBO. You can just download it. Uh, uh, and uh, so um, <coughs> it seems as though, uh, and what's interesting in part in this film, and you have at the outset this feeling that uh, uh, runs throughout the affect that runs throughout the field about being under surveillance all the time. Uh, and the actors, the trio, are about to make this revelation. You see the revelation in real time. And then you see the regular media. It appears on television and so forth, and so they react and, and, and deal with it with the kind of structure of the film. And by degrees, Snowden, he leaves uh, Hong Kong under advice of uh, lawyers and so <coughs> forth, and he ends up in Moscow, so I just give you an idea of the uh, film. So uh, it's a, an interesting question as to the role of documentaries themselves, the role of documentary with respect to law even, uh, now that I'm in a law school, but I'm, uh, uh, of course um, uh, I'm an external person, uh, but there's lots of documentaries, I think, that correspond a little bit to the decline of print media and the, 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 the role now of uh, uh, documents that are involved in evi legal evidence and self-evidence, and there's the Jinx film, a uh, very interesting example of all this. So, so uh, and um, Laura Portress was asked whether her film was a real life thriller. Uh, and she said uh, it did, wasn't intended to be that. But under the situation of danger, it turned out to be like that. And she uh, 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 was recording the experience in live time as to what happened. <coughs> uh, many documentaries are focused on the past. There's the uh, Alan Gibney, Alex Gibney, one about Julian Assange. That's a more classical kind of documentary where you go back and you find out what happened. 
this has a specificity and interest that it's recording what's going on as it happens. Uh, so just a few words uh, uh, about that and um, how they figured in these reflections. Uh, so of course, if you say that the medium through which you speak the truth is part of how you speak the truth, you're sometimes said to be a media theorist or a media archaeologist. But um, I, I think was, and Baudrillard, are very much a, a, a philosopher that, that, that's involved in that tack. But uh, I think uh, uh, Foucault was not uh, a media theorist and was not a, a, a media archaeologist. And that's because he thought that media and the politics of media have to do with the larger field in which the media figures the battles and the struggles that have to do with those fields, and those fields in turn are the zone in which you find this history of truth, uh, or the problem of truth, or the techniques of truth. Uh, and um, uh, so I think, uh, <coughs> to put it another way, um, Foucault, part of the problem of truth in Foucault is that Foucault thought of his own activity, his own activity as an archaeologist and a genealogist as a way of speaking the truth. Because he, he, he thought of it as breaking with the self-evidence of the forms through which we think about things, and therefore the forms through which things become true. Uh, and um, so um, uh, uh, this is connected to politics maybe also the idea of emancipation. Uh, maybe there's no media that's emancipatory in itself. It's only the larger techniques and technologies in which it figures. And so politics and popular truth need to be di directed more uh, uh, to them. Uh, so just uh, some uh, remarks on the side of this that has to do with the term technique technology, which uh, figures so prominently in these writings. Uh, uh, technique, of course, in French can be translated as technique and technology, but the, he frequently speaks of a technology of truth or techniques of truth. And what's interesting, and that's the problem I wanted to uh, try to get at uh, in Foucault himself, is what he meant by technique and technology, uh, why that's different from what's often talked about in the history of technology, like uh, uh, just computers or something like that. It, uh, so, um, okay, so <coughs> uh, how then did uh, Foucault uh, formulate this problem? The, incidentally, the expression politics of truth or general politics of truth uh, occurs in an essay called Truth and Power in, from 1976. Uh, which is an essay about the function of the intellectual. Uh, so Foucault says uh, that uh, Zola, when he said j'accuse, he was exercising one kind of politics of truth and was one kind of political uh, intellectual. And Oppenheimer, when he said he didn't like the bomb, uh, was also uh, making an act of truth, but of a different kind. And the difference between the two has to do with what's specific and what's universal. And so you see this problem of the role of intellectual. Snowden, obviously, an intellectual, much more like Oppenheimer than like uh, uh, Zola uh, or Sartre or Bernard Anglevy or others or Susan Sontag or the kind of great literary tradition. His act is important because of its insertion in the mechanisms, which it's also revealing. So, uh, so what did uh, Foucault uh, uh, mean by techniques or technologies or the politics of uh, truth? Uh, so, uh, and truth procedures. Uh, so, um, <coughs> and uh, of course Bernard has much more to say about this problem, but uh, throughout the lectures, uh, there's a constant interest in law and what Foucault called juridical forms. Uh, 
So in, within juridical forms, we find a pattern that's interesting in the larger discussion of the history of truth in Foucault. Uh, so you have ways of extracting truth, ordeal, torture, all kinds of things like that that are procedures or techniques that were developed for extracting truth. Then you have something else. You have proof, evidence, witness, and all that. So Foucault's question, how on earth did the, these practices of extracting the truth fall under and become colonized by the procedures of truth? And what would it mean to imagine a history uh, in which those procedures weren't uh, already uh, enclosed in juridical form? So the juridical forms, they give us something like the self-evidence. Uh, of course, Laura Poitras very much involved, because Laura Poitras, she's a, her film is part of a trilogy that starts in 9-11, that's concerned with torture, Abu Ghraib, the, 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 the larger issues, legal and political issues raised uh, 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 with that. So uh, uh, with this <coughs> in mind, um, I'd like to say a few words about my hypothesis uh, that I started with as to how this problem of the politics of truth in a more general way is formulated in Foucault. So uh, as I said, I think it's important that truth matters for the very idea of archaeology in Foucault when he does an archaeology of how the rituals of extracting the truth are inserted in a knowledge context. That he does that with other kinds of things. Uh, in the case of Lacan, but we won't go into this, it's the uh, neurological clinic of Charcot, where you have the, these hysterics, the, the battle of the hysterics for the constitution of knowledge in the neurological clinic. So you also, they're speaking the truth all right, but they're saying the doctor doesn't have the right to say what my body is like. And so there's a kind of battle and so forth a kind of pattern where you have speaking truth and you have knowledge, proof, uh, demonstration. 